Welcome to No GAN Control in Business Central. Let's fix that. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, one of the many visual uh, options we have is to show data as a, as a, as a GAN control. Uh, and now that we're getting the jobs module renamed to project, I thought, let's, uh, let's talk about, can we, uh, should we display the content of a project uh, differently than we, uh, we do right now, which is basically just a list of tasks um, or you know, planning lines. But if we need to visualize it, we need a Gantt display. And uh, there is no Gantt control in, uh, in Business Central. So let's see if we can fix that. Um, and uh, I uh, wrote up this one. So this is uh, this is called DHTML. Um, and it's right now it's both a open source version and a commercial licensed version. Uh, so we we're, we're gonna play with the uh, with the open source version, I guess, uh, which is GPL. So if 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 you use this in a product, then your 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 product is also and it has to be open source. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, so don't don't, don't ask me on on the details of that. If you use it commercially, you can go buy it. Um, anyway, let's look and see what we can do here. It looks nice. Let's start by that. that it, it looks nice. That, that, the screenshot was, was what sold me. Um, getting started. Add files. There's a script. There's a style sheet. And uh, there's potentially some uh, some mockup. And then we initialize. All this is JavaScript. Uh, so let's see if we can let's see if we can recreate this in. Uh, in Business Central. Um, so I've started an, a new app, and I guess the first thing we're gonna do, let's actually, let's create a folder uh, called Gantt. Uh, and um, if we wanna include any type of JavaScript, we need to create a controller then. So that's an AL file. Um, and we create a controller then. Controller then does not have numbers. That, that's the only object type right now, I think, without numbers. Uh, we can just call it Gantt. That's a, that's a nice name. Uh, it will, of course, live in the namespace of my, my app right now. Um, and we need to include some stuff. We could see here that we need to include this file. So we need this file. Uh, and I think we can probably grab it from somewhere here. It's right there. Um, so maybe we should actually download it. It's a dangerous file. There we go. Um, and I will just somewhere, let's do that on another screen. Uh, let me copy that file into, see if we go back here, I will copy that file um, into the, Maybe I'm, wow. Yeah, you see, what's happening on the other screen right is me not being able to spell to YouTube. So that's, at this point in time, that's probably slightly embarrassing. Uh, there's the file. The other one we need was, I'm pretty sure that was the style sheet. So we might as well grab that one also while we add it. Download the style sheet. We get that also. So I'm gonna, let's, I'm gonna keep an eye on here to see if it will magically appear. It's the 
style sheet. There we go. Now we have the 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 files that was suggested here. Add files. So if you if you want to translate this into so add files in, in this means add those files. What what they're doing here is add it to a, a web page. Uh, translating into AL control uh, add in uh, logic. That means that we need to add it to the control add in. Um, and um, now we can say that we have a file called dhtml xgand.js and we have a style sheet which is gand dhtml xgand.css. Um, and we can try to build this. It's happy. So you see that this one is actually we put the relative folder name here which is the folder we have over here so 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 it will verify that it's the right files so job done we created a user uh, a controller then well not quite because now we just kind of have that available so we still need to be able to use it so if we go back then we can see that they are creating a div, which is full size. We already have a div, so so let's let's actually let's create the, our test page right now. Test not HTML. See, I talked about HTML, then I go and create an HTML file. Let's create a page instead. New file, test al page there, and test. Uh, and before we forget it, let's put it in the launch because this is where we want to start. Um, so we can do page type equal cart, caption equal Gantt test, um, and users category admin and application area all. See how it goes. And then we can go layout. And in the content area of the layout, we will create not a control add in because that would be too easy. No, we need to add a user control. Uh, I know I make this joke every time that you created a control add in and then you have to put it into a page as a user control. Um, call it Gantt, and we can see that now we have Gantt as an option. Uh, here I, I hit the control space to actually get the list. Um, we can put the application area on it and that's it. So if we run our app now, let's run our app. Let's see what happens. Get published. Boom, it's published. I have to log in because yay, security. Uh, let's see what we get. We do not get again control of any sort. Uh, if we do inspect this thing, um, we can see that clearly there's something here. There's a bb.control add in container. Uh, so 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 we we get something, but but I think we need to continue in the initialize and initialize. So now we need to do something. Okay. Um, so this is JavaScript, but but right now we do not have a place to write any JavaScript. Um, but we can we can fix that, and we can fix that in uh, in different ways. Um, we can um, we can add a, f a another file here. So this is a file that doesn't exist. 
So actually, let's create that file. Well, so now we have a file that exists. This one will eventually be happy. There it goes. Uh, so there's there's two scripts that you can create uh, that where you can control stuff. One is is script, and think of this as as a library. That's something that get that gets loaded um, at a undefined time. Uh, the other option you have is that you can define a startup script. Oh, wow. let's see if I can type. So this script will get executed when the control is is ready to be started. Uh, so there's there's no guarantee. You 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 could most cases you whatever you write in this one you could probably write in this one and get away with it, but. There is no guarantee from Microsoft in what order these are getting loaded necessarily. I think so. Uh, maybe somebody can uh, can uh, can correct me on that if that's not the case. Um, but this one gets run when all these are loaded, uh, and it gets run only once. Uh, so if we go and create this one. Um, startup.js and here we could just simply grab wow php no 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 we will not fall that low wow there we go so, so now we have we're just taking whatever data that i have here so they added in, you know, they added a markup, so they added a div called Gantt here. Uh, and, and then that is what's referenced here. But we don't have Gantt here, so we need to use something else. And the something else, so whenever... Let's go to test. So whenever we insert a user control, what actually happens on the on the page is that we get an iframe. So we get a web page inside a web page. And the only content that's in that iframe is one div. Uh, and that one div is called control lowercase at capital A and in capital I. So we can tell that this is where we want this to uh, initialize and with this let's hit us fire hit f5 and see what happens we got something we got something but <laughs> clearly we have an issue because on my fairly large screen it's only taking up a corner and that, that's, that's kind of disappointing. But so far, just to recap, to, now we have gotten to a place where we actually have something on the screen. And the only thing we have done, I think this is actually an important comment to make, is that we have followed a JavaScript based uh, getting started uh, instructions. Uh, we have done the same steps. Well, we skipped a step because we already had this. Um, but we haven't really done anything ourselves. We have just followed their instruction and their instruction can be converted into something that's actually usable here. Um, but let's talk about that size thing. So if we, if we can see, let's go back to this one for a second here. We can see if I bring up the uh, inspection tool let's go do we'll dock it over here instead um, so I grab this thing just anywhere in it and then you see I can go up 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 and then here does the iframe and and we can see maybe 
This one says height 100, minimum height 100, max height 100, width 100, minimum width 100, max width 100. Microsoft really, really wants this control to be 100 times 100 pixels. So let's see if we can change that. Um, and if we go in and type height here, we get something. If I take, actually, I didn't type height. I typed type the weird word. Uh, anyway, uh, and if I type width, it gets the same. Uh, but I can also type stretch. So what happens if we say vertical stretch and horizontal a horizontal stretch. See what happens. Well, now we have a Gantt control with data in it that fills the entire screen inside Business Central. And so far we are in for eight lines here. Uh, zero lines here and those 17 lines from from the uh, from the demo thing and we just inserted two files so in in reality we have at this point created eight lines of code and and we're here that is in 15 minutes that's pretty good um so what do we need to do now? Well, uh, this seems to work great. What happens if I resize this thing? Clearly the control resizes. We get a, uh, we get some vertical scrolling going on the tax, tasks and so on. Uh, so, That is pretty nice. Okay, so so what do we do now? Well, now we can uh, now we can start looking at the content of this thing. And uh, let's 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 go back to this guy. And and see here gand.parse and then it's passing a uh, look at this tooltip wow that's pretty nice um so it it takes an object that has data and links those are two arrays and data is id one two three four five six text something start date uh, duration and parent which is an integer so all this so the two first has the first one just uh, go away parent zero progress and parent one so that means that task one and two are under project one task three is also under one and then tasks five and six are under id four which mean task three so and then we have task three start date null duration null but task three clearly has a start date and a duration here because it's test 3.1 and 3.2 and they are linked. So, so here it says ID one of link. So that's the ID of the link. Source is two, that's task one. Target is three, that's task two. So one and two are linked. So basically the orange arrows here are of this list. So can, can we build this? Uh, for sure. Let's uh, let's look at that. Um, so 
So what we'll probably do now is that we wanna we wanna do we can do multiple things. Uh, we could we could take our, our test page and say um, source table equal job, aka project. Um, and then we can say uh, project, and we can say so uh, caption. Data caption expression is equal reg dot description. There you go. Um, and then meet so so now we can we can load data into this one. We want to put real data in, but but the 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 problem here is that if if that's okay, let's uh, let's do a um, trigger on after get current record. And, and here I want to do gant dot load whatever. The problem is that at this point, this trigger will run before the control is ready in the UI. So, so the, the challenge with working with user controls are that they load inside a frame and they load asynchronously. So, so, so you don't, know when they're ready. The only way to know when it's actually done loading so you can start doing stuff is that we we tell them uh, we have the control tell us now it's ready. And the way we do that is we if we go back to startup then all the way in the bottom here when when we're done 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 with whatever and 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 you know in a minute we we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get rid of this right because that's what we want to do ourselves. So down here we can now say Microsoft dot dynamics dot nav because because nav dot invoke extensibility method. And we give it something here and later we can call it control ready. That's always a good one. And we have no parameters to go with this one. So what's happening now is that whenever it's done, remember startup is only called at the very end. So everything is loaded and then we call startup. So when startup is done doing what it needs to do, then we tell the controller then to call back into business central and say, hey, yo, baby, I'm ready. And uh, yo, baby, where did that come from? Uh, so, so in order for us to receive the yo, then we need to tell that the controller in and has an event. And that one was called control ready. And this is very loose. So if I call this control ready X, uh, this one still kind of does a thing and then poof, nothing happened. Uh, so you gotta make sure that these names are truly matching. Uh, sometimes copy pasting is, is, is a good idea. Um, so now I've told that this control has something called control ready, uh, which means that I can go back to my page now. And instead of trying here, I can go up to the control and say, okay, what triggers do you have? My friend control ready means that now from here, I can load the content. Um, so, But okay, so now we need to load something. So let's uh, let's go back to okay. What we want is to uh, do the same thing here, and the way we so this one clearly clearly needs a a JavaScript object. So I we could create a, a procedure called load uh, that takes a JSON object. So, so now the controller then expects us to have this function in a library. And and where where do we you know what are libraries? Well libraries are the ones we have up here. And we created this empty one that we never put anything in. So now we can say, hey, these are these are my, my functions. So I can 
create a load data. And then I can do gant dot, what was it? Gant dot parse, and it takes, oh, where do we go? There it is. Okay. So with, with, with that whole infrastructure, I can now back from my test page say, Gant. Well, I can because this is where it gets weird. This is the name, but it's a name on the cur page dot gant dot. Now we have a load here. Um, job as as JSON. Let's create a a function like that. So now we need to pass some JSON script into this. Uh, and we'll just add it down here. So let's create a procedure call, and then that might, when, when we're building this into a, uh, a an app to take over the world, this will probably go into an, a code unit. But right now we'll just put it on a page because then you can yell at me. Um, a job rec, just to make sure that we're not confusing anyone. And this one returns a JSON object. Okay, and uh, we can let's create a JSON object called out. And at the end of when we're all done, that's what we we add. And then we can do tasks. That's a JSON array, and we can do links. That's a JSON array also. Uh, now I'm just I'm, I'm going to go back to this one and, and see. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna cheat a bit here. I'm not. No, no. I'm not cheating. I'm just because apparently I'm getting old and I can't remember. So I, let's just put it in here so we have a chance to to see what's going on. Okay. So at the end of the things out at we need one called data and that should be our tasks and out dot add uh, links and that should be our links right so now we we have an object and there's that object has two child elements two arrays called task and links so now we can uh, we can we can call one for project, right? So let's uh, let's do project dot add ID. We'll hard code the one. We might get back in a second to uh, to to figure out if that's actually what we want to do text that is clearly job rec dot description project at uh, start date um, how do we put in a null What's the best way of putting a null in JSON value? Is null is undefined. Set a value to null. Boom. So now we can add null and project at duration, which is another null, uh, project at parent, that's a null, project at progress, oh, project, <laughs> P-O-G-R-E-S-S, that's another null and open is true. 
and there's probably some documentation telling uh, that there's a bunch of other option we can we can set but i don't care right now so we'll clearly and we'll add that to tax so add project to the task the five let's see if it works Uh, there's, there's some stuff going on here up here task object was expected clearly is a split task invalid argument what did i do but but i will uh i will take the 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 win that we actually got something in here but clearly clearly something is uh less than uh then correct. Let's verify. ID, text, start date, duration, parent, progress, open. Maybe it's because there's nothing else there. And this one is not data, and that one is called links. Invalid argument task equal object object of Gandhi's unscheduled task. Ah, invalid dates. I think it's probably the hint that this one says uh, December 31st. Anyway, let, let's let's 1969. Let's uh, let's try to to uh, job task record job task. Let's uh, let's see if we can make this better we probably need some sort of id incrementer so so let's actually change this to id and say that id equal one here and then go go what what do we do we do job task set range job number comma job reg dot number there we go. And if job task quantum find set, then repeater which until job task next. Whoa, equals zero. Um, and then we can go. Do, 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 do. Let's uh, let's create another one up here just so we can keep them sort of separated so we call task that's a j json object and since so here remember the danger as soon as we use json objects and stuff like that inside the loop make sure that you uh you clear it because otherwise we can have spillovers uh in the in the loop we can also whatever we do in the inner loop extract that as a, as a procedure and do in a separate one so um, but, but let's make it harder to to read on screen right now so I, I let's i'll do this so clearly we need to increment id so task dot add and i guess we can uh, uh we'll just type it here we go i am that fast uh, task dot add text that would be job task dot description task dot add start date that would be job task dot start date look at that task dot add duration whoa that will be job, wow, job task. Now it's because we got a job task. So, so, and this is where it would, might get into all sorts of things that we need to think about. Uh, duration five, duration two, duration one. So right now, I think in the demo set without us 
specifying what is the unit of, of, of things. Duration is clearly in the number of days. Um, which kind of is, is good for us because start date is a date and so we can go with with end date minus job task start date plus one I think if if it's if it's the same day it should probably be plus one let's do plus one I uh, this is where you can uh, so parent Right now, job task, we got indention. Uh, so if we really wanna, I'm, I'm at, at 55 minutes now. Um, so we let's do if, yeah, job task indention is zero then parent is one uh, let's put then in else um, then I'm gonna cheat and then say that task at parent is ID minus one. Um, and this works until you have a uh, in, in, indention where where there's multiple. It's gonna break. You know what? This won't work, but we're gonna let it hang for a second there also, just to uh, um, and task at uh, progress job task come. What do we? I think we have a. Uh, we have a we don't have a completion i thought we had a completion percentage on on a job task i guess i need to go and really look at what feels like there is and it's completion is that on on planning lines could be um we will just go with uh, zero there's no progress um so text start date duration parent progress so open is not on on these ones so i guess we can do data dot add task uh no task dot add task there we go here goes nothing if this remotely shows anything that looks like a Gantt display of some sort, then I am stopping the video here because we are at 38 minutes. And we have a few errors, there's, so there's still something. Phase one, so these are indented pseudo correctly. So hang on, can, can we take a quick look at, at, at the data? They're not indented. Why are they not indented? Demo data, Microsoft, what's going on? Functions, indent, job tasks. Yes, I would love that. Okay, hang on, M, 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 I. This is just not showing. Oh, 
one. And now I have no idea if it was That was uh, interesting. Uh... <laughs> okay, here we go. Place one. And apparently there are no dates on this. This is probably still why it gets, gets confused. Um, so why January 1st? Oh, so, 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 okay. So, so we, and clearly we, and you're probably been yelling at the screen for now and I, uh, I deserve that because there are no start dates on. So we need, I need to, this is way too simplistic what I did here. Uh, in reality, we need to do case job task, uh, what's called, it's called uh, job task type. Um, of job task type colon job task uh, uh, colon posting. That's pretty much the one I created here. Uh, so so I need to treat the begin and and maybe the end total is actually, why do we even want that? That makes no sense in, in the Gantt chart. Um, so so I, I need to create another one here saying, let's just copy all this and we can see if we can figure this out. We're way over time anyway. If you're still here, thank you. Uh, begin total. Um, and this one will not have this one will have to have the start date as null and duration as what did they do up here on on was it task three duration null uh -huh. that's probably what we need to do so duration up here is null here goes nothing Not even sure what this is. Undefined. Oh, I know that. Sorry, that, that was, I'm yelling again. That's because we have this one outside, but now there are certain tasks that we don't actually add. So, so everything in the loop, or I could, I should set the filter so to not even consider those. There we go. We just, there's still something off with dates. Uh, but we're getting closer. Walt ceiling, touch up, review. And this one is also, you see, these are under each other. They shouldn't be, uh, again, we're going back to this doesn't work. Uh, but in order for this not to turn into an hour long video, but that was actually not the intent, but then one, one line of code led to the other. Um, I'll make sure that this one is actually on, on the, on, on, on the, in the GitHub repo. So, uh, if you want to play with it, play with it and, and, and you no, know, let me know in comments what I did wrong. Uh, 
or or complete it. And we, we know that the, the the whole parent thing needs to be way more thought out than than what I just tried to do here. Um, but the gist is that we can take and can control and uh, with a bit more work, I, I'm sure it's actually going to work also. Uh, I'm sure we, because we have actually used this this uh, well the. The commercial version of this we have used in in, uh, in customer projects, so uh, I know it works. Uh, but uh, it takes apparently more time than forty five minutes to, to to get all the way there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to see more ale hacking, check out this video. It's a good one. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.